Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to navigate the PEBT Parent Portal. To get started, we will assume you've already created a MyLA.gov account, and if not, you can find more information about creating an account on the PEBT website. So once you have logged on with your account, you're going to click the Acceptance Warning, and once you do, you're going to get on the My Account homepage. You're going to have two options to check your EBT card your cases. You have the left navigation where it says check my PEBT cases and if you scroll down there's it's at the very bottom also. We're going to click that one. As you can see I currently have no cards linked to my account. So I'm going to click here to add a PEBT case. First I'm going to enter a wrong date of birth that way you get to see the error message that is going to be displayed. And as you see, when you type in the school's name, it's going to populate at the bottom, so you would just click that. And now I'm going to submit it. And as you see, I have an error message. And it's saying that we did not find the PEBT case based on the information that I entered. Please re-enter it. I would do that first in case you put the wrong date of birth or you put the wrong student name number or just misspelled the name. If it still doesn't link, then it's possibly that your card has not been issued yet or the school notified us of a cha address change or we did not get information on your student or they weren't eligible. That would be the options. But if you feel that your child is eligible, you can always contact the school and they will let you know when they submitted it. But it allows for, please allow four to six weeks from the date the school submits it for the child to get the card to link the case. Okay. The next I'm going to show you an error message is when you enter the incorrect format. And I'm just going to leave the rest of them blank. Okay. So it's going to ask me to enter all the required fields. But if you see, it's also going to let you know that you entered the date of birth in the wrong format. And it's going to tell you how to enter it. So let's go fix our date of birth on our client. And I'm going to submit now. And as you see, I have a message that says you have successfully linked your child's PEBT case to CAFE. At this time, I'm going to go link another case. So you can link as many cases as you need to your account. So let me see. And you can link students from different schools on the same account also. So I'm going to submit, and I successfully linked my case. So I'm going to view my case summary now, and as you see, I have two cases linked. I'm, I'm going to show that if you accidentally hit remove, it doesn't automatically remove it. It's going to give you a warning, go, hey, did you mean to remove it? If you didn't, you just let it, just do not click remove again. So what we're going to do is check our view e details. <laughs> At the top, we have our student information, name, date of birth. If the SSN was submitted, it would be X's except for the last four. Their IDs and the school ID. This mailing address information. Please make sure you review this information. This is where your card was sent to. If the information is not correct, please make sure that you report it to your school to have an address updated. That way we can get you a card submitted to the new address. Like I said, it's very important. And if you have multiple children, make sure you review each person's mailing address because it could be correct for one child but not another one. That way, if you've got a card for one child but maybe not the other one, that could possibly be the reason. At the bottom, we have our benefits information. We have our case number and we have our status. First, I'm going to go over the status. Eligible means it's issued. They've been paid out, they're on the card. If it's awaiting issuance, that means we have got it on the file, it's being processed, but we haven't paid it yet. So that if it says eligible, you should have your card and it should be paid. Now every time we pay a month of PEBT, there's going to be a new line added. 
So we're just going to review this one. We have our PEB fit, EBT benefit number. We have our benefit amount, the issuance date, the learning style, and then we have the benefit start month and the benefit end month. For this child, as you can see, they were hybrid for August, September, and October. November, we did not get a record for them for November. So either they were completely in school in November or we did not receive their name on the file for that month. If you have a question, you can always get with your school and they will let you know. And also, right here for December, we were 100% virtual, which is why the amount is different. And then we went back to hybrid for January. So it's very important to pay attention to the PBET amounts and the learning styles and your months. And like I said, if you have a question on why your child did not receive benefits for a specific month, make sure you contact your school and ask them why. It may be that the file didn't get to us. It could possibly be they forgot to add the child or they weren't eligible. <clears throat> but you would have to contact the school to get that answer. Then we're going to go back to our case summary and I'm going to view my other case. Same thing up top, student information. Then we have the mailing address. Like I said, make sure you pay close attention to the mailing address. And then at the bottom, PBT case and eligible status. Now this one got benefits for the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 1st month. We have virtual and we have hybrid. And they all got paid on the 15th, and that's the month. So as you see, you'll have a different variety of, op of um, learning styles, different amounts, months. So just please make sure you review all this information. And if you have questions, please contact your school. But I'm going to show you now, just to show you, if I remove it, and then I click remove one more time, that's been removed from my case. So that is it for the PEBT portal. I hope everybody enjoys it. Thank you. Welcome. In this video, we are going to go over the View Details section for your child's PEBT case that is linked to your SSP CAFE account. As you can see, we are logged on to our CAFE SSP account at this time, and we're on Check My PEBT Cases section. From here, you click View Details for the child's case that you want to view. And we're going to land on the PEBT Details screen. The top section is all your child's information. Name, gender, social security number if it was provided, date of birth, the state student ID, the local student ID, the school ID, and the school name. It's very important just to make sure all this information is correct because this is the information that your school has on file for your child. Then you the second section is the mailing address information. This section is also very important to review because this is where your PEBT card was mailed to and any correspondence in reference to your PEBT card is going to go to. If for some reason this address is not correct, you need to contact your school district to get it corrected or you can create a request through the SSP and that is a different video on how to update your address for a new card to be sent. And the um, school districts will get in touch with you if they need some additional verification to update your address. And then the last section on this screen is your PEBT information. It's got your case ID, what your status is, and then we have a drop down for school year. Currently we have a 2021 and a 2022 school year. So our first one I'm going to click is 2021 and I'm going to select view details. At this time, when you scroll down, you're going to see each month that your child received PEBT details for the 21 school year, which, which was 2020 to 2021. How much they received and the type of learning style that they had for each month. Now to review the 2022 school year, all you're going to do is select 2022 in here and click view details again, scroll down, and it's going to show you how much they received for the 22 school year, the amount, 
and the learning style that they that we received for them for the month. So this is where you can validate the amount that you've received and what type of learning style that your child was reported for having for COVID. Then after you finish, you just go back to view case summary. And you're back on your check my PEBT cases. Thank you. Welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to link your child or children's PEBT cases to your CAFE SSP account. As you can see, I'm currently logged on to the CAFE SSP and I'm on the Check My PEBT Cases section. And when you look at the PEBT case summary, as you see, there are no cases linked. So I'm going to click here to add a PEBT case. So, and we're going to land on the Your Account screen. A couple things to take into account on this page. The first thing is the date of birth has to be entered in this exact format that you see displayed here. So I'm going to enter my date of birth. And then I'm going to go to my student's first name. It has to match the records that are on file for your child. So if your child has name has a hyphen or an apostrophe or any special character like that, you must enter it in the first or last name field in order for your case to be located and linked. The next is our student ID. And the last thing is our school that we're attending. As you start typing the name of your school, as you see, it's going to bring up all of them. So I located my school. I'm going to look at it to make sure all my information is correct. And then I'm going to hit submit now. And as you see, I'm going to get a message that I successfully submitted my case. So I'm going to scroll back down and I'm going to view case summary. And as you see now, I have my case linked. I got my case number, my student name. I have a hyperlink to view details, which is an additional video that if you want more information, you can review. And then I can also remove it. There is no limit of how many children that you can link to this case. So if you have multiple children, do not worry. You just click the add another case and link your next one. Thank you. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get assistance on your activation pin errors for your PEBT card. As you can see, we are currently logged on to our CAFE account and we're on the Check My PEBT Cases. We are going to go to the Request PEBT Changes section and you will select Activation Pin Error and then you will select the case that you are receiving the errors on and you will click Submit. And we're going to get on the Activation Pin screen. At this time, you're going to enter your name and you're going to enter a phone number. And do not enter the, the dashes, just enter all the digits. And then you're going to type in the pin activation request box the exact errors you're receiving. That way, when a DCFS employee contacts you, they will already have a general idea of what issues you are having. And then you're going to click Submit. And you're going to get a successful message. Then we're going to go back to View Case Summary. At this time, we can go to the, our history and we can click view status. And you see your status is submitted. And if you feel that this was an error or you submitted it on the wrong case, you can always hit cancel to remove the task. And like I said, a DCFS employee will be getting in contact with you to assist you on activating your card.